Hello guys, welcome to my video again. On today's video, we will be looking at the theory of constructivism in international relations. After the end of Cold War, it became evident that one of the dominant theory, neorealism, was not clear about future developments of the balance of power. Even some liberals, who have basically accepted neorealist assumptions as a starting point for analysis, became vulnerable to much of the critique directed against neorealism by constructivists. And that's when constructivism became increasingly significant, especially among North American scholars, because the environment there was dominated by the neorealist, liber neoliberal approaches. There was also an emergence of a series of other theories that were sharply critical of mainstream rationalist approaches to the discipline. They provided alternative insights to intersubjective basis to IR. That's when the constructivist turn in IR became widely accepted. Nicholas Onuf in 1989 introduced constructivism to IR, who also coined the term. The intellectual traditions on which they draw have a long histories in other academic fields, but it was Alexander Wendt's work called Anarchy is What State Makes of It, The Social Construction of Power, written in 1992, and a series of other works which really gathered a larger following. His ideas will also largely be the focus of our study today. The theory of constructivism is concerned with how the social and political world works. The constructivist claims the social construction of international politics. In other words, the social reality is not given or they do not exist naturally but is made up. The assumption here is that the environment in which actors take action is both social and material. It reflects a view that material structures are given meaning and used within a context which are a product of human interaction in a social world. Here, one can take away three important themes. That the social reality can be altered. There is a possibility to change international politics. Constructivists emphasize the social dimension of international relations by giving importance to social values and norms. Also, opposed to an objective reality, international politics is a world of our making. Constructivists emphasize the process of interaction and as a result bring historically, culturally and politically distinct realities into being. Constructivists focus on norms and shared understanding of legitimate behavior along with material factors that also play a role. They are guided by what is called the logic of appropriateness. Such logic involves reasoning in that actors try to do the right thing and are not about ends and means. And as such, the self becomes social through acquiring and fulfilling an institutional identity. In this respect, norms not only constrain behavior, but they also constitute the identities of actors. Far from a new realist perspective of anarchy, that the anarchic structure determines state behavior, the constructivists have argued that a social structure leaves more space for agency, meaning for the individual or state to influence their environment as well as to be influenced by it. Alexander Wendt's article, Anarchy is what state makes of it, captures this idea. For example, British missiles have a different significance for the United States than do Soviet missiles. The distribution of power may always affect states' calculations, but how it does so depends on the intersubjective understanding and expectations on the distribution of knowledge that constitute their conception of self and other. It is a collective meaning that constitutes the structures determining whether the environment is hostile or friendly, which organize our action. Therefore, 
structure and agency could, ha could be said to have mutually constituted. Constructivists also argue that the actors acquire identities, which are relatively stable, role-specific understanding and expectations about self by participating in such collective meanings. In other words, identities form the basis of interests and behavior. Just as a state identified as liberal democracy cannot be detached from an interest in complying with human norms, understanding who they are in turn provide them with understanding of their interests and possible ways of doing things. This opens up what for neorealist theories the state has always been, some kind of a black box. They are assumed to be uniformly and universally rational egoists who are primarily concerned with material interests. But constructivists seek to explore how states arrive at decisions such as opening the black box of interest and identity formation. Also, constructivists argue that most objects in international relations exist only by virtue of human acts of creation which happen in a culturally, historically, and political context of meaning. They are social facts, rather than purely material ones, that exist because of the meaning and value attributed to them. Here, John Searle argues that social facts depend on human agreement and typically require human institutions for their existence. Without the attribution of value, and existence of financial institutions, a dollar bill or a euro note would be nothing but a piece of paper. It is human design that and intent that shapes the material object into one with a specific meaning and use within a context, where specific identities and interests are at stake. That hope distinguishes between conventional and critical constructivism. Conventional and critical constructivism share a number of theoretical fundamentals. Both aim to empirically discover and reveal how the institutions, practices, and identities that people take as natural are a product of social construction. They both agree on the mutual construction of actors and structures, also, that anarchy is a social construct. But they differ in the area of methodology and epistemology. This, he suggests, manifests most in the way they understand identity. Conventional constructivists, they wish to discover identities and their associated reproductive social practices, and then offer an account of how those identities imply certain actions. But critical theorists have a different aim. They also wish to surface identities, but not to articulate their effects, but to elaborate on how people came to believe in a single version of a naturalized truth. In other words, critical theory aims at exploding the myths associated with identity formation, whereas conventional constructivists wish to treat those identities as possible causes of action. Critical theory thus claims an interest, to in, an interest in change and a capacity to foster change that no conventional constructivist could make. Conventional and critical constructivists also split over the origins of identity. Conventional constructivists accommodate a cognitive account for identity or offer no account at all. But critical constructivists are more likely to see some form of alienation driving the need for identity. Critical theory's approach towards identity is rooted in the assumption about power. Critical theories see power being exercised in every social exchange, and there is always a dominant actor in that exchange. Unmasking these power relations is a large part of critical theory's substantive agenda. 
Conventional constructivism, on the other hand, remains analytically neutral on the issue of power relations. Although conventional constructivists share the idea that power is everywhere because they believe that social practices reproduce underlying power relations, they are not necessarily interest, interested in interrogating those relations. We end this video with this note that constructivism offers a way to understand how identities are constructed what norms and practices accompany their reproduction and how they construct each other is a major part of constructivist research program and each of which are involved in an account of global politics. I thank you for watching this video. Hit the like button and do subscribe for more videos. See you next time.